Cursor just moved their blog off of their CMS to using raw markdown files. It turns out the CMS they were using was Sanity, which is really interesting to me because my blog was originally written in MDX files and then I moved it to Sanity so that non-technical people on the team, content writers, could more easily use it. But Cursor have gone in the opposite direction. Now, I don't think there's a right or wrong here, but I do think it's really interesting to see what Cursor has done. And this impacts so many different parts of the business and tools that you're using today. We recently redid our landing page. You can see it over here. I got a designer to do it. I think it came out really nicely, but a really important decision was, should we build it in something like Framer or Wix or Webflow, or should we custom code it ourselves in XJS? And we actually decided to custom code it. You can find the code for it in our repo. It's open source. And the reason we chose to do the landing page like this is that it's so much easier to just ask Cursor or Claude Code to make edits directly, add a new section, change things in the page, the layout, and so on. And so we do all the benefits of a tool like Framer that it might have been easier in the past for people to make edits there. Actually, now it's much easier for us to make edits within Cursor directly. And it's not just technical team members, even non-technical team members can go and make these edits. A lot of people are using Claude Code and Cursor. You don't need to be that technical to use it. And so I think this is the direction we're going to see for a lot of different companies. By the way, this is another landing page we put together recently. It came out really nicely. It uses Gemini 3 Pro. I iterated on it a few times, but within half an hour, I came up with this. You can see nice subtle animations. So I highly recommend taking a look at Gemini 3 Pro if you're doing your own landing page. And the last area I've had some discussions with friends recently is around admin dashboards. Now in the past, tools like Retool and Metabase were really good. You could literally paste in a SQL query, like how many users signed up in the last month or in the last year. And you could basically just drag that query into this dashboard and get a chart similar to see what you see in the screenshots. Now, I still think tools like that are amazing, can be used really well, but there's more and more of a reason, especially if you're a small team, to just build these admin dashboards yourself in-house. And again, the huge benefit is that you can ask your AI, your cursor or Claude code to go and edit it directly. You don't need to go log into some other tool to go and do that. So there's a lot of places where you can now decide, do I want this project to be a GitHub repo or do I want to use some third party tool? And then there's a lot of benefits now to having these GitHub repos of static files that you can go and edit. And that's what Cursor went and did. And we're seeing a few other people go and do the same thing. So Murat Khan over here, Cursor published a blog post last week, arguing the cost of CMS abstractions is now higher than the cost of just editing code with agents. And I think a lot of us believe that to be true. I ran the same experiment on our website and cut WordPress, shipped the marketing site and resources as raw code. For me, if I had to choose WordPress over raw code, I'm choosing raw code every single time. This site is now static HTML, JavaScript, no server app, no database, no CMS API in the request path. There's an admin UI for drafting and exporting JSON, but publishing is Git first. Okay, so a few interesting things here. He did move off of WordPress with crazy behemoth to have to manage, and you can basically manage a site like this for free. Now, what he did go and do is build his own mini CMS, but even doing something like that isn't that crazy. I could imagine whatever he has here was vibe coded pretty quickly. So even if you want to bring back CMS tooling, you can do that, but the whole thing is now managed for your Git. You have your Git history, everything you're used to as a developer using Git, and it's just really easy to make changes. So add a new section to the homepage is just one prompt. Fix broken links across all posts, another prompt. Rename the re resources taxonomy, and so on. It took him half a day to get a working static site plus resources plus admin UI. Used Opus 4.5 in Cursor. It migrated posts, generated routing, and built the admin UI in one session. If your team can live in Git, you probably don't need a CMS or any no-code website builders anymore. And I think a ton of you watching this video right now would agree it's going to be so much easier for you to just manage your blog in your code base and then editing it with something like Cursor. So let's take a look at Lee Robinson's blog post. He works for Cursor, used to work for Vercel. And you can see I migrated cursor.com from CMS to raw code and Markdown. I had estimated it would take a few weeks, but was able to finish the migration in three days with $260 in tokens and hundreds of agents. And by the way, I think in many cases, it's not even going to take that long. He expected a few weeks, took a few days. And as we saw, Murat Khan even did this in half a day, apparently. So if you're a small website, I think definitely is manageable to do it in a day. And so it's interesting because they were previously using MDX, then they went to Sanity, then they went back again. And they did remove a ton of complexity by doing this. Here's some hidden complexity you have with a CMS. 
So you have user management, everyone has to have their own login, developers, designers, and so on. Internationalization, CDN and asset delivery, dependency and abstraction blow. So those are some other complexities he had beforehand, but moving to code, he just removed all of that. If you want to go and do the migration yourself, he has a section here on how he did it, but he says after about 10 agent runs, he got 80% of the way there. Here you can see some screenshots of how he's doing it. I actually never use agent mode. I'm always in the code editor. I wonder if I should switch over. And another thing that happened along the way is he actually removed Storybook, which is another tool where, you know, you could just have a slash components page. And that's actually what I do today. Here you can see slash components. It's basically our Storybook. It doesn't have every single component in the app. But when I want to test more complex things or just let the team know that these are the things that exist. So I go and put things here. And so if I need to remember, oh, what sort of typography do I need? I just see, oh, typography, H3. That's a tag that I'll use for this or page heading and so on. So as part of this move over, they actually went to that more simple approach. Here you can see what they've come up with. They built a simple version of Storybook very quickly. Here you can see this is actually more complex. This actually looks like a bit of a Storybook thing to me. Mine is way simpler, but yeah, you can do so much of this stuff in regular code right now without having to use tools like Storybook. One issue I faced when I had the MDX blog is I didn't have a good way to upload images. And you actually see that he went and built this himself. He built a mini GUI, three to four prompts, where he can basically upload images and different assets, and now they can use them in blog posts as well. So that's one of the more tricky bits that you'll need to have done, but today you can vibe code it very quickly. The final result is $260 worth of tokens, 300 million tokens total. By the way, if you're using Cursor Ultra, this all would have fit into that. So the $200 a month plan would have handled all of that. 300,000 lines of code were removed. Wow, that's a lot. And 40,000 were added. And so it's going to be interesting what happens going forward if Cursor decides to stay with this approach. But it looks like for now, the trend is that a lot of teams are moving to code first approaches and not using these third party tools. Now, I will say for me, I went in this opposite direction. Why did I choose to use Sanity? As I mentioned before, I wanted other non-technical people to be able to post blog posts there. If I didn't have that request from a non-technical person, probably wouldn't have done it. The other thing there is about having an API you can interact with, although we're not even using the Sanity API and you'd be able to hook up an API to your GitHub repo as well if you really wanted. And as we move forward and LLMs just become stronger and stronger and people get more and more used to using these tools to edit files, then all these arguments about the design and not being able to edit a code file go away because everyone's learning how to use Git at a basic level, how to make changes to any file. They're used to it already. They're designing this way. They're making ch code changes and prototyping demos on their own already. I want to add a blog post about the benefits of having an AI email assistant. I'm going to quickly set one up here. What I've gone and done is tagged my existing file, content.mdx, and also the blog folder so it can figure everything out. I'm using Composer 1, so it will do it quite quickly. Here you can see where the blog posts are. This is actually from my old blogging system when I used MDX files. For the, I still support that. For the new stuff, though, what I'm doing is just putting Sanity stuff in here. This is easier for external contributors right now. This is actually part of the marketing assets for Inbox Zero, so that this isn't public, but if you go back in the history for the repo, you'll be able to find all of this stuff. So it's gone and finished. Let's see what has been created for us. Uh, table of contents, time savings and efficiency, linking and so on. And here you can see I've got a completely done blog post and some other files that were needed, the metadata, which is great. And yeah, it's gone and done everything as I need. I can update this date to sometime in 2025 but we're ready to go now. Maybe I'd want to change the post a bit so it isn't AI slot. Maybe I'd want to create like a cursor rule to give it some guidance on how we like to write blog posts. Maybe there's too many bullet points here, so it reads too much like AI. Maybe we want it to be more readable, but all of this is very easy to do direct from the repo. So super, super easy. If somebody needed to make a change, they can obviously go and do it like so, or ask cursor or an AI to go and change it. So that short interlude hopefully explains everything I've been describing and how easy it is and how beneficial it is to have your code or your blog be in your code base direct. That was super easy to add a blog post. Maybe I'll start ranking for it on Google. Since we've spoken a lot about Sanity, let's see what they had to respond. So Lee didn't mention it was Sanity, but the Sanity came out and said, yeah, we were the ones they were using. And this isn't Sanity specific. This is just about any CMS in general. This is actually good for Sanity because when Cursor did choose a CMS, they chose Sanity. I guess similar to me, good taste. But now that they're moving off, so Sanity is the CMS that they'll be leaving. So firstly, they agree with a lot of what Lee wrote. So that's good to know. 
they say what Lee actually built was a CMS. And yeah, maybe it was. There's definitely elements of a CMS there. The real point is, what should you do? And if you want to call it a CMS, well, why use some external CMS when you can build your own is an argument you can make as well. By the way, if you're looking for a CMS, I've been pretty happy with Sanity. We're still on the free plan. But I think the free plan seems to be very generous. And we self-host and code the blog ourselves, which we have full control over it there. All the code is in our repo, gettingbox0.com slash github. Now they go into things that break at scale. Let's go through some of these. What I will know is that a lot of us just aren't building at scale. And also I would say Cursor is a company at scale of $30 billion valuation. But I can't remember how many people that work for them, at least 60 people by now. So they're not the smallest company. They are growing somewhat and they intend to grow to hundreds of people. And they just seem to be happy with their move away. So let's actually see what happens at scale though. First, they say, what happens when your pricing lives in three places? The pricing page, the comparison table, the footer CTA. In Markdown land, you update three files, or you build a templating system that pulls from a canonical source, at which point you've invented content references, at which point you're building a CMS. So they're going back to this point of using a CMS. And yes, you would use a template. You would import a component. This isn't difficult to do. So I'm not in love with this argument that you're building a CMS. Yes, you're building some lightweight CMS that you can run yourself, and then you don't need these third-party companies and you don't need to pay them a crazy amount of money. Okay, let's see what else. What happens when legal needs to update the compliance language that appears on 47 pages? You get for the old string and replace it, except the string has slight variations, except someone reworded it slightly on the enterprise page, except now you need to verify each change because regex can't understand intent. Now you're building a CMS. Well, again, you can call it a CMS. You can call it whatever you want. Let's say Lee went and built a CMS, but this would be so much easier for me to do if I was in Cursor. If I had those 47 pages in Cursor, I'd be like, hey, go and update the 10 pages these exist. And no, I don't need to grep for an exact string. Cursor can go and understand what is written on that page. Doesn't need to search for exact strings. Also, I don't know how Sanity does this any better, frankly. I think it would probably do it worse. I bet that Cursor going over all my files would find these pages and links and I need to fix a lot better than what Sanity will be able to do. Anyway, suddenly you're passing thousands of files on every build to check for broken links that you can't query. And yes, you're building a CMS, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Markdown files are the content equivalent of denormalized strings everywhere. It works for small data sets. It becomes a maintenance nightmare at scale. Okay, so I guess the main point they're making here is that the structured content. So for example, you're gonna have customer ID saved. And let's say we change customer name one place in the database is going to automatically update everywhere in the project, which I get. If we're talking about legal docs or blog posts, which frankly are just documents, then no, I think Cursor will handle them really well. Now for a, what a lot of us are doing, myself included, marketing pages, blog posts, if I need to reuse stuff, reuse stuff, I'll just reuse a template. I'll import a component basically. I don't usually have like variables that I need to access a database. Maybe there, there are a few variables which are stored, but again, I'll import them. Let's say the number of users we show on our marketing page, I just update that manually every so often. And that could actually fetch straight from the database as well if it wanted. But yeah, if I was building a database with like 10 million rows, it would be crazy for me to have this stored in Markdown files. But in a lot of our cases, we are doing marketing sites and we just want Markdown files with some images and videos. Git is not a content collaboration tool, but for developers, it is a collaboration tool, but I can understand that for like non-technical people, it isn't, although non-technical people are becoming more and more technical. Why agents can grep only works up to a point. So let's say we have an entire e-commerce store, then we're trying to do products with price, a hundred dollars that are in stock. I agree to run that as a markdown file would be really challenging. So if you're using Sanity for something like your e-commerce store, I agree, then you should use something like this. And here's a query of how you could do it in Grok. No idea why they had to invent their own language. Really didn't ha like having to use this, but the LLM understood it and wrote this for me. So I didn't have to worry. But obviously if we're doing something like this, then it would be so much easier to do with an actual database. But there's no reason that I can't connect my MDX files or my content pages to a database. Let's say I was building this e-commerce store and I said, hey, I don't want to use Sanity. What I'd do is I'd have a database of 100 different items listed or a thousand, they're different prices if they're in stock, all of that stuff. And I would be able to connect my front end to it and display what I need. And would I need Sanity for all of that? Not really. I'm sure there are places where Sanity would be really helpful. I'm not running an e-commerce store. If I was, probably go to Shopify. But I can understand if you're that sort of business that has all this other stuff going on, then yeah, maybe Markdown Files isn't the best for you. Anyway, here they fight back against Lee and they say, Here's what we think Lee got backwards. The solution to my agent can't access my C 
isn't delete the CMS, it's give your agent access to the CMS. And then they say, well, it was also bad timing because our MCP server wasn't good enough when Lee tried it, but we fixed it. Our new MCP server is out now. And so all these different things like updating the schema to creating documents, managing releases, all through the same interface you're already using to build everything else. You never have to see any CMS UI, UI unless you want to. Um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, it wasn't just about the MCP server. It would still be easier for everyone to just edit their blog directly. You can change the text in markdown files. You can ask cursor to go and change it. You don't need to have this magic abstraction in between that is sanity, I think. Overall, it's going to be way easier for many smallish size businesses to be managing this themselves, especially if it's a small technical team. Markdown is nice for LLMs. That's not the point. LLMs are also good at SQL. Yes, they are. That doesn't mean you should store your database of SQL files in Git and have agents grep them. No, but more and more, this is becoming the case that like, you can just dump everything in a Git repo, honestly. But yeah, obviously, if you want a database, use a database, but that's just not what we're talking about here. And yeah, you wrote about it three years ago, but well, what's the argument here? What's changed is now we have agents that can work with both formats. The question is, which architecture sets them up to do more? The markdown file is very easy for them to use. I don't know what your argument was in this section. Sorry for wasting our time reading it, and I'm not going to spend more time trying to decipher the argument. Cursor's context isn't everyone's context. I agree. If I ask my content writers to update the posts in Cursor, I'm not sure that would be the best idea. But for a team like Cursor, which is highly technical, basically everyone in the company is technical, then 50 developers shipping one product website. For many of us, we might even be one two-person teams building our own small side projects. So let me know what you think about this. In my opinion, there are pros and cons to each approach. I still use Sanity myself. The main reason being that I want my content writers to use it. It's free. And it would just, it would take me some time to move off of it. Now, I'm not a website that's built on WordPress because if the, I was on WordPress and I'd be thinking even more so, I want to get out of this help. But if I did move off, then I did also be a whole bunch of features built into the WordPress ecosystem that I'd be losing. So you've got to bear that in mind. And for most businesses, the reality is just stick with what you're doing. If you're building something new, then definitely worth considering just doing it as markdown files. It's good enough for Cursor. Good chance is good enough for you as well. And the same goes for dashboards but still retool and metadata are great take a look at them and the same goes for landing pages but there as well frame or webflow or the other sites they're also great options so none of this is black and white if you like this video be sure to subscribe for more i talk about ai coding and open source and if your company uses email a lot be sure to check out getinboxzero.com that's my company and the product we're building we help teams be more effective over email we organize your inbox and draft replies in your voice till next time